guys, welcome back to my channel. So a while back I made this little lamb doll and in that video I mentioned how, I think I mentioned something about like an angsty black sheep lamb or something. Um, and a couple of you guys said that I should make a doll of that. A friend of mine on here, Creepy Kitty Creations, actually made her rendition of a goth lamb and she did a really awesome job. I'm gonna link it down in the description box, but I wanted to do my rendition of a goth lamb. So that's what we're doing today. My original lamb is a combo of a cave club body and a Ever After High forest pixie head. I only had one of these forest pixie heads, but I did have a Barbie extra mini which has a similar head size um, and I didn't want them to have like the same exact head that just felt repetitive so it was kind of nice to have something that I thought would work but it had different features. I think the Barbie extra mini dolls are pretty cool. Um, they just have like a nice little cohesive outfit, little accessory, a stand. We love a stand. They're inexpensive-ish I think. The only thing that I'm not like too keen on <laughs> is their body. Um, I don't know, I think it looks cute in clothes, but like out of clothes, I think it looks a little goofy with their heads. But I adore the combination of this Barbara Extra, I keep saying Barbara, this Barbie Extra mini doll with this Cave Club body. I think it's like chef's kiss. Her earrings were like anchored into her head, which is just a new sight for me to behold. I've never seen this in a doll before. Um, and they were kind of hard to get out. To detach the head, I just heated it up with my blow dryer and the neck holes were basically the same, so I just popped the head on. Honestly, expect to see another custom probably soon-ish of this combo because I just adore it. I wanted to show y'all their head comparison. As you can see, pretty comparable size. I was going to completely reroute her head with black and blue yarn, but then it occurred to me that I'm stupid and her hair is black and I can just go over this white part with an alcohol marker. So that's what I did and it made my life way easier. So I just colored it in and it didn't like transfer or anything. It was perfectly fine. And it didn't take too long either. I just like did this for a little while and voila, we got blue and black. We've got to take all this face paint off so we're doing that with 100% acetone. The mold for this doll is just gorge. Like, it's so pretty. I think in my last video, I said that sheep have digitigrade legs and we're gonna make digitigrade legs, but actually, um, sheeps have unguligrade legs. I think somebody told me that in the last video. So, the more you know, you know. We've gotta cut her legs off just below the knees and also the tip of her foot. To get those legs to bend the way I want them to, I'm using bent wire and hot glue. To sculpt on top of these legs, I am using epoxy sculpt and my epoxy sculpt is dry as hail. So this is gonna be some lumpy sculpting, don't judge me, okay? Um, I need to buy more, I just am being cheap. I finally bought gloves that actually fit my hands, so woo! <laughs> um, but I'm also sculpting her hooves. We have to cut off her ears, which honest to God makes me cringe. I don't know. They just look so realistic, so <laughs> it looks painful. Um, but I am making some ears out of epoxy sculpt as well. The ears are really easy, they're just flattened out epoxy that I roll a little bit and then mold onto her head. Thank you. 
We need to color match those ears, so I mix together some acrylic paint and paint over top of them. Onto the face up, so I sprayed the doll three times Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray, wearing a respirator mask, and we begin drawing. I start with the eyes, and I wanted to make this doll distinctly different than the other one. The other one is like round eyes, looks fairly innocent. I wanted to make this one a little bit more fierce, so I gave her almond shaped eyes. Um. We love a waterline here, so I took a dark peach pencil and colored it in. To blush, I'm using a darker pinkish, like kind of red pastel, and I'm putting it literally just all over her face. To make her look like a beautiful blotchy princess, I took a darker red and I tapped it on the middle of her cheeks and then also a purple around her eyes. To shade around her eyes, I'm just using various tones of like brown, like a mid-brown, dark brown, all the browns. I've mentioned before that I love blue like undertones on pale skin and I found that for tanner skin I like using green because I just think it makes the skin look really pretty and olive -y. So I'm putting that basically in the areas that I typically would put blue, so around the eyes, um, the mouth, and I'm using, I'm still using a blue colored pencil for veins which are just branch like pencil marks around her forehead and her eyes. To make them lippies look even more pouty, I took a brown pastel and I just shaded around the mouth. I feel like I took a really long hiatus from freckles um, and I'm getting back into them because I've just fallen in love with them again so I splatter some around her face. If we have dark, we must have light, so I add highlights around her face with a peachy pastel. I actually tried something new with this doll. Typically I use red to tap onto the middle of the lips with a q-tip to make it look a little bitten, but I decided to use brown for this and I really, really like it. I gave her blue eyes. Um, I just like painting blue eyes and also it just goes with her color scheme. Her color scheme is black and blue. I shade around the edges of the waterline with a darker rosy red pencil. For them eye highlights, I add lines of white around the eye. I feel like it's barely showing up, um, but I swear I'm doing something. <laughs> I wanted her eyes to be extra dramatic, so I added a black ring around her eyes. To shade underneath the top lid, I used a little bit of black pastel. Ah. 
Black brows are honestly my fave, so she has black hair, so she's getting black brows. I wanted these brows to be a little bit more like severely arched. They're very straight, but they point down, um, and I feel like it gives her a little bit more something something to her look. We love a shiny waterline. I don't know, I just like it when my dolls look like they're gonna cry, so I add some metallic rose gold on the waterline. We give her a pupil and some brow hairs like the queen she is. For the brow hairs, I'm pointing them pretty much straight up until I get to the middle of the brow and then I start to slowly start pointing them to the side and then down. I grabbed my handy dandy Winsor Newton fine liner and I added some flicks going from the ring around the eye towards the pupil. I'm going over certain areas around her eyes with my white watercolor paint. Just really subtle like lines of it, nothing too dramatic. I add highlight lines to her iris radiating out from her pupil with a light blue watercolor paint. If you guys ever have a hard time getting really thin lines with paint, I typically do like two brush strokes on my hand just to thin it out a little bit and then I go on top of the eye. For them lashes, we're doing really quick, slightly curved, sharp pencil marks on her upper and lower lash line. I go over all the hair, so the lashes and the eyebrows, with watercolor paint that I'm taking from the pencil. With white paint, I flick some lines of white going from the white of her eyes into the iris. Like I do with like every doll, I add some rose gold watercolor pencil to the ends of the outer edges of the lashes. I love this no matter the skin tone. I think it looks really good on pale skin, tan skin, whatever. I decided to do a simple catch light for this doll, so I did a dot on the right and flicked a line out. I really like how simple and effective this looks. To gloss them little lippies, we're using the Tamiya gloss, and I'm just putting that on her mouth. I absolutely love how this face up came out. Like, it's honestly one of my favorites that I've done in a while. I haven't seen many people paint one of these Barbie extra mini heads, and they're such a good base, like damn. So her body needs some work because she's looking a mess. Um, I want to make her legs black, because I'm putting black yarn down there, so I'm painting it black, so in case there's any gaps in it, it's just not obvious. When I sanded down her legs, I also sanded off her panties, and when you sand tan her skin, it gives you this sort of ashy look, so to take that away, I'm going on top of it with matte varnish. To keep her whole black and blue color scheme, I painted her hooves blue with metallic uh, blue paint. I created wefts off camera. You guys have seen me create wefts like a million times. Um, I'm going to be gluing these, hot gluing them onto her legs and I'm working from the bottom upwards. Each time I put down like a layer um, and I wrap it around, I'm trimming it as I go just so I don't get overwhelmed when I have to trim it later. When I get to the very top of the leg, I don't want you to be able to see the weft um, and I want it to look like it's growing out of her skin. So I'm taking tacky glue instead of hot glue and I'm cutting the glue part off of the weft and I'm gluing that down just so it looks a little bit more natural, 
like how it would grow out of how fur would grow out of skin i'm also doing this on top of her crotch so i'm just putting down the tacky glue and then wrapping the like hair around her crotch so i'm putting it in the front and then wrapping it around to the butt because I bluntly cut her fur, it looks really weird and like too even. So I'm taking an X-Acto blade and I'm just razoring it down so it looks more uneven. We gotta blush the body because um, I just feel a need to blush every doll's body. <laughs> so um, I am taking the same tones that I used on her face and using those on her body. So like reds, purples, brown, freckles, all of it. Off camera, I gave her some little braids for her hair, and this is her. What a queen. On to clothes. So we are making her like a wee little vest and some bloomers. I'm doing it with this velvet sparkly fabric. Um, I just cut out the fabric um, into a vest pattern, and then I'm going to be hubbing everything. I made like a little collar john for it. So I'm gluing that on to the front of the vest with some Fabri-Tac glue. And then I sewed the front and the back of the vest together at the shoulders as well as the side seam. After it was put together, I decided to need a little something something. So I took some more black brushed out yarn and I added fur and I'm just gluing that on with Fabri-Tac glue around the collar. Once it was glued, it looked a little too messy and we're a fancy beach, so I cut it down with some scissors and just made it more uneven. I sewed a fastener into the front and here she is. Wow, very furry. Um, I also made her like a little tube top out of some ribbon. It's just real simple um, with a fastener in the back. I made her some bloomers. I don't necessarily know if she like needed pants, but we made them. Um, and I sewed together the crotch for the front and the back. I sewed the front and the back together at one of the side seams and I took that original ribbon that I used for like a tube top and I'm gonna be folding it in half and gluing it because it was a little bit too big. I gather stitched the waistline and the bottom of each one of the legs uh, to get that bloomer effect where it's poofy and then I took that ribbon and sewed it to the top and also the bottom. We then sew up the other side seam as well as the legs. I sew a fastener onto the back and we have itty bitty bloomers. I decided she needed a tiny top hat because honestly like we're loving the mayor of Townsville energy. Um, and I sewed, my that's my little donut for the brim and I sewed it together good side to good side onto this like shiny fabric and then we flip it. I'm sewing the top of the hat to the main part of the hat what is like what is any of this called honestly i don't know um but it's going to be giving abraham lincoln i just googled it and google was like not very helpful but um i sewed that the top to the main part and then we sewed up the side seam and then we sewed the top to the brim i have little skull buttons and i want to glue these to these dark blue bows i'm going to be hot gluing these at the very end to the front of her bloomers our other lamb has a shepherd staff, so she also needs a shepherd staff. <laughs> Does it make sense? Lambs or sheep or shepherd staffs? I don't know, but they're cute, so whatever. With some epoxy and wire, we're going to be creating the curve to the top of the shepherd staff. So I mixed my epoxy together and then I curved a little wire. I hot glued the wire to the very top of the staff and formed the epoxy around it. I wanted her staff to be a little bit more gnarly looking than the other one. Um, so I made a very jagged curved shape with the epoxy.
To make the gradient from epoxy to wood look a little bit better, I took some epoxy and just wrapped it around and smoothed it down where those two connect. I sanded the staff down off camera and I got a comment recently of someone saying that they wish it, that I would show me like how I sand things. I'll be honest with you guys, like it's how you would imagine I sand things. I take sandpaper and I rub it down until it's smooth. Um, I imagine that's how everyone sands things and I just find it incredibly boring. So, But I took more of those little bows and I super glued them to the staff. And off camera, I actually wrapped ribbon around the staff because it was looking a little boring so that's what we did with her staff done she is actually done um and i'm pretty happy with this doll i think that her and my lamb are just really cute companion dolls um, i love doing dolls in pairs i just find it really rewarding and i think these two look very cute together i didn't even notice that the one was so much like she's like shorter than the other one i didn't even know um until they were next to each other anyway y'all i hope you guys like her um if you guys do like her like this video subscribe it makes me happy and i hope you guys are having a beautiful day Bye. Oh, <laughs>